you are watching in the studio here at Davis Media Access, or more appropriately, the home version of In the Studio. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really pleased to welcome my guest, Adelita Serena. She is a climate action organizer for an organization called Mothers Out Front. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So in researching uh, for this interview, I learned a couple of things. Mothers Out Front is a national organization, but it has a lot of layers and, and at the state level and then the region level. So please tell us a little bit about what region you're in, where you're based, and uh, then we'll get into the, the specific work you do. Thank you, Autumn. Um, yeah, I'm based here in Yolo County and I am organizing in Sacramento and in Woodland, and my team here, or our team, is the Capital Region team in reference to our proximity to the state capital. Um, and of course, you know, I'm in Yolo County, so I organize moms here, not just in Woodland, but in Davis. Um, you know, I have some in Sacramento. I have moms in Winters and Esparto. So it's just, you know, I, I organize wherever I'm at and I'm kind of everywhere in this area. Right. So why moms? I mean, I feel like I know the answer to that question. My adage is if you want something done, ask a busy mom and it'll get done for sure. But here we're talking about climate action, which is arguably one of the, the biggest and most impactful issues of our time. And you're specifically helping to organize moms. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, so basically what brought me to climate action work was, you know, seeing the things that I have enjoyed growing up change for my kids. Um, and also, you know, I do have a background, an extensive background advocating for youth and also for human rights, um, you know, going way back, you know, from when I was a child um, and, you know, my dad was organizing for Cesar Chavez. Uh, so I have a background of advocacy work, um, you know, for human rights, for youth, and as a mom now for my children's future. Um, it is critical that moms are heard, not just locally, but on the statewide level, on a national level, uh, because we are really the ones that, you know, we're watching things change before our eyes. And what are we going to leave for our children? That is, you know, as mothers, you know, we have a mama bear spirit. We protect our children. We want to, um, it's emotional because it's yeah. scary to, to think about their future. Um, yeah. And that is what drives me. Yeah, we, we bring life into this world and we have a mandate to protect it in a way that those who aren't mothers, you know, it's it's hard to understand if you haven't walked that path or aren't walking that path. So I, I, I get it. I have three kids and, and I get that emotional piece and, and being worried for their future. Let's talk about some of the specific um, campaigns or policy issues that Mothers Out Front sure. is addressing nationally. And then let's drill down into how that uh, plays out here in Yolo County and your work specifically. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we are a grassroots organization that mobilizes moms specifically around um, transitioning off fossil fuels, you know, as as we watch our climate change, we know that one of the biggest offenders um, of climate change is fossil fuel extraction and what it's putting into the air. Um, and it's warming our climate at a, a very accelerated rate. Um, so that is our number one target is fossil fuel and transitioning away from fossil fuel and that, that means, you know, tackling it at many different levels. We have communities mm -hmm. that are living right next to extraction sites here in California. Um, there are states that, you know, have setbacks for sensitive sites such as homes and workplaces and schools. And unfortunately, California still does not have um, setbacks for sensitive sites. Um, we are one of the, you know, I think we're like the third top 
oil producing states. It moves around from third to fifth, um, but we're we're up there and we're oh, extract yeah. we're extracting we're extracting near neighborhoods in the Central Valley. Regarding um, so that is a statewide campaign that we are engaged in um, is really pressuring our governor to take mm -hmm. executive action not just to haul extraction, but to protect uh, sensitive communities that are right near drilling sites. Um, again, these communities are typically in the Bay Area, uh, Central Valley, uh, Kern County. You know, we have oil fields that are, you know, some of them are very active. Some have been abandoned. Yeah. We have wells that, you know, are abandoned, but are still um, emitting, you know, toxic fumes. And then there is, mm -hmm. of course, storage sites, um, oil a storage or um, gas storage facilities that live in neighborhoods that have leaked. And so some of these gas um, storage facilities, um, they, they tend to leak and, and they, they are, are harming the communities that they're in. And these communities are typically BIPOC communities. So black and brown communities um, right. are typically um, those that are nearest these sites. Regarding our local campaign, mm -hmm. uh, I'm working with the Yolo Climate Action Coalition. I'm a member of that group as well. Myself and one of my team uh, leaders, Lupita Torres, who is uh, a part of our Mothers Out Front uh, team. Uh, we've been actively engaged for the last year and a half with uh, pressuring our county to adopt a climate uh, emergency resolution, which they recently did in September. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have adopted this resolution at the county level, we are in the next phase of that process, which is um, appointing commission members for each district in the county. And this commission, which, by the way, there are a few open seats still still left to fill, um, this commission will decide and design the implement, implementation of this resolution. And so that will include, um, of course, transportation, uh, housing, uh, food, and, and, and how, you know, we, our biggest export is is food here in Yolo County. Yeah. We're an agriculture region. Um, and of course, schools. And, and so there's a whole infrastructure that we have to assess and decide what makes sense for our county and how we're going to um, transition into, um, you know, making renewable energy more accessible to all of these areas. Thank you. Uh, let me take just a second to connect a dot for viewers. If you're someone who's actually interested in in serving on uh, that task force commissions or anything, if this if this is of interest to you, you can go to yellowcounty.org. But the best thing to do um, is to contact your local the county supervisor for your district and tell them of your interest. And that that's kind of the most direct path there. You, Adelita, you've just touched on a lot of different things. And for me, that really highlights just how complex the climate crisis is, because you've mentioned everything from uh, storage, uh, tox storage of toxins in neighborhoods to schools to uh, direct action influencing policymakers. And then, you know, I've been an activist for various things for a long time. There's always the direct action of showing up at, at the Congress member's office or showing, you know, and, and this is all part and parcel of being a, a regional organizer as you are. You also talking about those uh, those oil derricks and oil uh, storage facilities. You're right. You can drive up and down Interstate 5 and they are right there. And they're right in the heart of agricultural um, communities and places where farm workers uh, uh, work and, and live at different times during the year. And I'm really wondering about the specific effects of climate change on our farm workers. It's such a, a big issue here in Yolo County. Um, and I'm wondering if you could speak to that directly. Sure. Um, as I mentioned early on, uh, you know, my dad organized for Sessa Chavez for 10 years in the Coachella Valley. I come from a long line of farm workers. Um, a farm worker family. I worked in the fields myself uh, as a young girl. Um, 
and so this is something that for me hits home. Uh, I've always grown up around agriculture. Before I lived in Yolo County, I lived in Monterey County, uh, which is another big ag community. And then before that, Coachella, which is also um, a big ag community. Um, of course, that's because we have followed the fields as a family. Um, right. And that's traditionally what farm worker families do is they travel, um, they follow the fields based on the seasons. Um, and some settle in areas that are just agriculture areas, such as Yolo County. And mm -hmm. um, they are exposed, fa farm workers are exposed to everything nature has to offer all year round. When they're planting the seeds, when they're clearing the fields, uh, when they're caring for the, the fields before harvest and then harvest season. Um, and they are are experiencing amplified effects of climate change uh, because the heat has has increased just at a rate that ha we haven't seen before. You know, we are in uncharted territory here. Um, mm -hmm. What we're seeing is something that we have never experienced as you know, popu a population. You know, maybe <laughs> back in biblical times, but you know. <laughs> I would say we have not recorded this in our history, uh, what, we're, what we're seeing now. And so what farm workers are exposed to is new, is something that you know they, they need support with. Um, there are um, some things in place under OSHA that, that require you know, farmers to provide shade, water, um, you know, toilets with toilet paper and and you know hand washing stations those things are have been established for a while but what we're mm -hmm. seeing farm workers experience is very you know is, is new it's like the, the amount of heat that they're exposed to for the the period of time like right. you know typically farm workers get up very early during these summer months to attend to the fields to avoid heat exhaustion, but now it is hot earlier and for longer. So they're exposed for you know a longer period of time than they typically are. Um, and, and of course the fire season has impacted them heavily. You know, yeah. we, what we're seeing in California with the fire season, um, these are, again, it's new. It's we never, you know, we've only had a fire season for the last couple years, but it's a thing now and it's not going away. And so the smoke that they're experiencing, the inhalation of, of particulate matter is damaging to lungs. And we still don't know what the long-term effects of that will be. You know, what does this mean? They're going to have cancer of the lungs later? Does this mean that they're just gonna deal with respiratory issues? Um, we don't know where it's all unfolding in real time. And so there has to be some protections in place. They don't have hazard pay typically, so they can't just take time off work to protect themselves by staying indoors. They don't have a plan B, you know, and farmers mm -hmm. typically rely on farm workers to harvest even, you know, for longer hours because they want to avoid their crops being tainted by the taste and smell of smoke. So not only can't they take time off, they're being asked to work longer and harder hours. So this is all again, you know, new territory and and we, you know, the you know, we at, at the county level and at the state level have passed budget items um, around climate and around fire mitigation. And mm -hmm. some of the things, as you mentioned, we've showed up to, you know, the county board of supervisor meetings. Um, and of course have submitted, you know, our, our public comments at the state level on what we think these budget items should go towards. And we are advocating locally that the county, um, you know, a, a set aside some funding for farm workers for hazard pay. Um, those are things that are still in the works that they have not confirmed uh, whether or not they're going to approve. But the, the County Board of Supervisors has heard on this item and are considering it. As you know, we have received uh, American Rescue Plan funding. And so yeah. they're still deciding what that funding is going to be used for. Yeah, it is a good moment um, 
to advocate for use of some of those funds for various things that, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity with this funding. Exactly. I, I feel like we'd also be remiss in not mentioning that the farm worker population may not have had access to, to good health care to start with. So they're kind of starting um, behind the eight ball, if you will, you know, um, and, and then being exposed to, to toxins and uh, exacerbated heat on a routine basis. Exactly. So it is, it is a big problem. And uh, I think here in Yolo County, we'd be fooling ourselves if we thought it was anything other. But I, I, I do know that the, the county is, you know, in active discussion about um, a number of issues, in, including climate, including food insecurity, in, including all of that. So in many ways, I, I feel fortunate to be in, in a county that's willing to work on um, these issues. So it looks like the the capital region team um, in under which you work for Mothers Out Front is is a fairly recent um, development, and we've talked about some of the big picture issues you're addressing. And I'm I'm wondering, uh, especially during COVID, it's harder for all of us to you know to get out and do things and mobilize people. But I'm I'm wondering kind of what's on your you, you know your plan for the next six months to one year in terms of um, issues you're going to be working on. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I've been organizing in the capital region for almost three years. Uh, we started uh, towards the end of Governor New uh, Governor uh, Jerry Brown's um, mm -hmm. term, his last term, and there was a big push to put pressure on the governor, and that's when Mothers Out Front brought me in um, to work here in California to address the issues that we're facing. And so we started, I started by recruiting a team um, to attend the, the big march in San Francisco, the March for uh, mm -hmm. Climate Jobs and Justice, uh, which mm -hmm. was huge. And um, we we showed up in force and we we made a big impression on, you know, the, the march in general was one of the biggest climate marches um, on record. Uh, and then, of course, from there, we continue to tackle, you know, the statewide issue. We, we got a new governor um, and then, you know, the pandemic hit shortly after. So, right. yeah, it's been a challenge, you know, because a lot of my moms and, you know, I don't just have moms on my team. We always say mm -hmm. in reference, you know, mothers, but we say mothers and others because I also have single dads on my team. I have... Um, individuals that are not even parents, but they believe in the movement and what the work we're doing. And so they want to support and they engage and they show up. And I also have, um, you know, youth that are, are engaged with our teamwork. So I always say mothers and others, because I want to acknowledge everyone that has, has, you know, contributed and show up right. and support the work we're doing. It does look different though, of uh, being, being online, you know, during the pandemic really it made it hard for some of my team members to to access what we were doing because of the digital sure. divide um and that's something that we've been trying to address by supporting some of our moms and you know some of our other members uh whether it be uh you know with some kind of stipend or or options to to engage because it's been a, a big challenge uh for my team um, and, and of course we're all, you know, they're working and some of these like meetings that take place, say for instance, at the county level, or if there are statewide, um, you know, bills that we're trying to support, a lot of those meetings take place during the day when a lot of my moms are at work. Um, yeah. so I've done the best to, you know, include their voices by having them write statements that, you know, are shared, uh, electronically. And then, you know, some of us have been able to, to show up uh, online, some, some, you know, but not everyone. And so I've done, you know, my share of one-on-ones on the phone, you know, at, at social distance, uh, trying to really keep our members safe, but also myself safe and, and, you know, engage and meet mothers where they're at, meet my team members where they're at, whether that's on a phone call, whether that's updating them, you know, uh, on a social distance type of uh, gathering, but it's been a challenge. And, and what does the next six months look like? 
Well, with this new <laughs> Delta variant spreading at the rate it is at, and of course, as you know, Yolo County will be reinstating its mask mandate this Friday um, yes. officially. Um, we will we will do what we can safely. If we're we are having our first in person team meeting on the fifteenth, and so we set that date before we you know yes. seen what was happening. But we're still going to go ahead and you know attend with our face coverings, our masks, and um, just really try to check in on our team members where how everybody's doing, but also to update those that have not been able to engage because a lot of our team is about doing things in person they show up to actions they they do find a challenge to to engage online uh especially right. when they're working one and two jobs and you know trying to navigate you know their schools you know their children's school situation it's yeah. just it's been a yeah. big challenge we're again in uncharted territory here so yeah. We're playing it all by ear, but we are making progress on, you know, some of these items I've mentioned. And and Adelita, you've described that so well, the challenges of the time, the challenges of trying to keep work going, of checking in on teams and volunteers. Um, I, I work with many different nonprofits in the county and community groups, and and I hear that same story from, from everyone. It's... Uh, it's a lot. So I want I want to thank you for taking the time to be here. And I want to thank you for the important work you're doing. And I'd really like to uh, uh, have you talk about where um, people can get more information about Mothers Out Front. I know there's a website. I bet there's social media. Tell us where we can find out more info. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can visit mothersoutfront.org. I always direct you know, folks there, uh, sign up to receive our emails, our updates. Um, and it will also ask you how you want to engage. Do you want to, um, you know, volunteer? Do you want to start a new team? Depending on where you're at, if there is no team, um, you know, we encourage anybody who is looking to engage to engage at again, at the level that they're ready to do so. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at the Woodland Sacramento uh, Mothers Out Front team. And um, we also have a Twitter. Uh, we, we find that a lot of our leaders and decision makers, political individuals are on Twitter. And so we're able to, um, you know, amplify messaging on Twitter to the governor or to other, you know, um, assembly members that we're trying to reach regarding our message uh, there on Twitter. So you could find Mothers Out Front uh, Capital Region on Twitter. I'm very active there on Facebook. Um, and you can directly message us there on Facebook as well if you have any questions on, you know, engaging. And I post updates there. So I will be posting a flyer soon to our first in-person gathering. Of course, we're going to be um, a uh, you know, following the mask mandate here for Yolo County, uh, any kind of in-person situation. Great. I'm making a mental note to circle back with you in a year and see how it's going. Post-pandemic, I say that with great hope and optimism, even though we're not there at the moment. So <laughs> thanks again so much for joining yeah. us. You've been watching in the studio here from Davis Media Access. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and I want to remind you that if you visit davismedia.org, click on the DCTV logo, it'll take you to an online archive where episodes are streamed, and there's all kinds of interesting stuff. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube at Davis Media Access. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you.